Every day we try and give you the best in what you uh, need out there, news, commentary, and so forth. Every week, Brad Keithley comes in. He is a former oil and gas consultant and counsel, now retired, but he's also formed Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget, which is an organization dedicated, well, to just that, creating a sustainable budget in the state of Alaska, which I think is something that we have, we're woefully needing right now. He joins us this morning to talk about the capital budget that was passed and the uh, new potential for a special, 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 special session. Yes, you counted it. That's the fourth special session this year alone. Brad Keithley joins us to discuss it. Good morning, sir. How are you? Michael, I'm doing great today. How about you? Uh, not too bad. Not not too bad. Just another beautiful day in paradise. Um, I'm not out checking out all the uh, Celtic music festivals, but other than that, it's awesome. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you've got you've got the finer things. I mean, if, I do, if you I haven't plugged have, the finer. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have the finer things and you've given me some great leads on the finer things. I appreciate that on Facebook. You hooked me up with a couple of good. I added them to the list. We're going to see if we can get to them before the summer's over. So we'll uh, we'll check that out. Um, great. I, uh, I've been uh, I've been following this. I don't know if you heard the show yesterday, but I, I delved down into this whole article uh, to, at uh, APRN, the Alaska Public Media, uh, on the capital budget. And I just, the tone deafness, of course, now, as somebody pointed out, of course, the Alaska Public Media received, what, three or four million dollars in the capital budget for their funding. So it's like they know which side of the bread is being buttered here. But they're lamenting the fact that all these people, all these contractors are going to be out of work. And and, and I, my favorite quote was from Corey Baxter, who is the junior district representative for the International Union of Operating Engineers. And he's like, it's huge for our members. I'd say 90 percent of our work has to deal with a capital budget. And with a huge cut we've had over the last couple of years, it's hurt us big time. A lot of our members are thinking of moving out of state. And I said, uh, yeah, that's called the free market. It's what happens when you grow dependent on government largesse that floats up and down with the whims of a cyclic market. That's what happens. That's why you don't build a business model on that. Yeah, ab absolutely right. But, but I think I think these articles, and there's been several of them, that's certainly one. Uh, but I think these articles are just missing the story entirely about what's gone on with our budgeting process uh, uh, this cycle. They focus on the capital budget. They focus, or they focus on the, the impact on the construction industry. As you said, uh, uh, Southeast Alaska is focused on the fact that you know they're they're losing uh, <laughs> losing contracts as a result of not having government contracts, or they're losing members as a result of not having government contracts. But what they're what these stories are missing is the impact of the the economic impact of cutting the PFD, of not fully funding the PFD. Uh, in the uh, uh, in the capital budget, in either the capital or the operating budget, cutting the PFD by a thousand dollars, which is roughly seven hundred million dollars, a little over seven hundred million dollars, uh, in terms of the uh, the lost injection into the Alaska economy from the PFD, and with the with the multiplier effect that ICERS analyzed, over a billion dollars uh, in terms of lost economic impact um, in the economy. And none of the articles, none of all of these economic analyses are focusing on that at all. They're, they're, they're missing the big picture by focusing on this, on this minor picture on the construction industry. Yeah, and, and I think that's the, that's the big thing. I guess what my point was was that they're lamenting, oh, my gosh, our people may have to leave. Well, welcome to yep. Alaska. What do you think is happening to the average citizen out there? The yep. average citizen's yep. out there is having to cut back on pretty much – anything extraneous they're taking pay cuts a lot you know there's a tons of people 9,000 people or something that have lost their job uh aedc is projecting that of course even more are going to lose their job and they added another year to their projections on how long the recession is going to last what do you think was going to happen yeah here, here's the here's the remarkable thing to me um uh in, in terms of comparing the construction industry to the to, to what's generate the economic activities by, generated by the PFD. Uh, so they're talking about you know losing losing capital dollars. Well, capital dollars when when according to the ICER analysis, when you when you inject a capital dollar into the economy, when government injects a capital dollar uh, into the economy, has a capital project and injects a dollar through that, 35 cents of that dollar immediately leaves the state. Only 65 cents of that dollar generates income 
economic activity inside of the state of Alaska. From the PFD, on the other hand, when you inject a dollar of the PFD into the income, in, into the Alaska economy through the PFD, it generates a dollar forty in Alaska income. So you're you're comparing when you when you look at you know should we be spending on the capital budget or should we be spending on the PFD? You're looking at adding sixty five cents, actually subtracting thirty five cents from the Alaska economy if you spend it on a construction project as opposed to $1.40 uh, uh, from gen- uh, in economic activity income generated through the PFD. $0.75 cents difference, uh, if I yeah. did the math right, $0.75 cents difference uh, uh, between, those, between those two things. So we have all these articles, and they're in the Alaska Journal of Commerce, and they're on you know, public uh, news or public radio, and they're in the, in the Alaska Dispatch, all these articles focused on, oh, my gosh, you know, what are we doing to the economy by, by you know, not funding these capital projects? What are we doing to, you know, jobs and that sort of stuff? Well, you're missing the big picture. What are we doing? What, what's, the, what's the bigger thing we're doing to the economy uh, in terms of not funding the PFD? The bang for the buck. PFD has the biggest bang for the buck in terms of income generated in the state of Alaska, of any of the state fiscal options, um, and cutting the PFD it does the has does the has the largest adverse effect, does the biggest harm to the overall economy, uh, overall income uh, of any of the fiscal options. So I, there, all these articles about the capital budget. Each time I read them, I keep looking down, going, "Yeah, but we didn't fund the PFD, and that has a bigger impact." None of that in there. They're just they're just missing the story, in my opinion. I and that's and and that's I think that they are missing the story. And again, I don't know if it's willful blindness or what. If everything's just being colored through this whole, you know, the lens of perception, but they seem to be missing the whole point. Is that and there's a tone deafness to it too. They don't they don't see this impact. They don't see the impact of everything else that they're talking about on the private economy. It all seems to circle back to how is the public economy and and either the public employees or the secondary and sometimes even tertiary industries that are dependent on that government spending are being affected. But there's more to the state of Alaska than just those industries. Yeah, it, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of the special interest versus the big picture, right? I mean, so what you get is you get John McKinnon and you get – and Corey and others who you can get quotes from uh, quickly about, oh, my gosh, you know, what are we doing to the construction industry? What are we doing to construction employees? Uh, and they push they push that message. I mean, I'm, I'm they're lobbyists, right? So they so they will contact um, uh, certainly will contact their legislators, but will contact the media also and say, look, this is a horrible thing that's happening to our economy by not funding our segment of the economy. You could sort of you sort of have seen the same things from time to time on the oil and gas side, right? Look, if you don't fund these credits, if you don't fund these uh, uh, oil and gas cashable oil and gas tax credits, look at the horrible things that happen to our economy. Or, you know, from the public employees union, look, if you don't, if you cut government jobs, look at the horrible things that are going to happen to, you know, all of these government employees. Look what, looks what, look what will happen to Southeast Alaska, to Juneau, in terms of cuts to the employees. And they're, and they're all, I mean, all of these little special interests are looking out for their own little segment. No one. <laughs> None of these right. stories are focusing on the on the big impact, the overall ec- economy uh, of Alaska. If we had the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or the Financial Times covering these, their economics reporters would be digging into the overall impact. What we've got here in Alaska is we've got we've got these little segments of the population that are you know looking out for themselves, and they're driving the overall story. Uh, at least as reported in the media, as opposed to the overall economy driving uh, the overall story. And that's, that, that's beginning to get a little frustrating because what happens in that is you lose – I mean, you, the people, people understand the PFD cut. They understand the individual impact of, it, of that, but they're not understanding the overall economic impact of that because it's getting lost in all of these little, these little you know, discrete – Stories about, oh, my gosh, my construction industry has been affected or, oh, my gosh, my oil and gas, my oil and gas, uh, you know, cashable oil and gas tax credit industry has been affected or, oh, my gosh, my public employee union uh, or, oh, my gosh, my K through 12. All interesting stories, 
but none of which are capturing the big picture. And and I guess uh, you know I and I, I'm frustrated along with you because again I think it, they should be digging down into it and and showing it and in fact we're going to get into it in the next segment there are some reporters that are actually asking some of these questions and what's interesting is the response because the response thus far has been um the number one thing that people are noticing is the loss of the permanent fund dividend and that's yep. uh you know that that's what that's what the average joe on the street is is hearing about when i go and talk to people out on the street and business owners and private citizens about these issues, which I mean, I do almost every day, every time that I'm out in public and I end up talking to somebody, it seems to be one of the points of conversation. And I'm not necessarily always bringing it up, um, but it seems like that's where people, the average Joe is feeling it. Uh, these special interests, of course, are feeling it from the government spending standpoint. The private citizens seem to all be feeling it from the personal income standpoint. Yeah. And, and, and certainly, certainly the, the individual stories uh, about the impact on them uh, is important, and picking up those individual stories is important. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to buy fuel. I, I'm not saving for college. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. But, but we need – those stories need to step it up then another, uh, another notch and say, well, what's happening to the overall economy as a result of not having all of these individual uh, decisions being made, and the and the storyline is, and that storyline is, the overall economy is suffering a bigger loss in income, dollars circulating in our economy, uh, as a result of not funding the PFD, as opposed to it, it, more than anything else. And the jobs, I mean, there's a jobs impact uh, of not having the PFD as well. People spending money, uh, PFD money creates jobs indirectly. Nobody's I mean, very few people are employed directly by the PFD, the PFD division, but you create jobs by, by having this money in the economy. And the ICER analysis, I always find this fascinating, the ICER analysis is that the number of jobs lost uh, uh, per $100 million or per uh, $700 million or, or whatever, whatever number you want to use, the number of jobs lost in the economy as a result of not having the PFD out there is almost as is almost as big as the number of jobs lost uh, by not funding construction projects. What's what's more right. important is the income, but the job loss is almost the same. So you've got a you've got a situation where people are bemoaning job losses uh, uh, because of of you know the article by by in public radio that we're talking about here. You got people bemoaning the fact that oh my gosh we've lost all these jobs or people are going to move out of the state. Well, it's happening as a result of not having the PFD as well. And more importantly, we're not having the income in the economy to, 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 for people to have money to go buy at small businesses as well. It's the overall picture that, that nobody's picked up on that I think is the huge story that's, that's sitting out there in our economy right now. Well, and, and it's about to get even worse. Uh, the AP and the Journal of Commerce reports that Governor Walker now working on a new tax proposal. He said on Friday, uh, he's working. Uh, he's working on that. Right. First of all, he said he was going to run for re-election, which I said good luck with that. Uh, but he's crafting a new tax bill that he hopes is going to garner support from lawmakers. And and the only thing that I, I you know, there's got to be an end game here, Brad. And all I could see for the end game right now is that he's looking to stabilize Alaskans' credit rating so that he can go out and leverage that as a way to fund and expand on his idea of a gas line. A am I? You think I'm missing it here, or or is that? Does that appear to be your, the end game from your perspective as well? Well, it's. I, I think that's part of the end game. I think the other. I think the other part of the end game is, frankly, uh, you know, Governor Walker was elected to, to really ran to do one thing to to, to get the gas line, uh, in in promote the gas line, put it put it in place. You know, he said he wanted to turn dirt in his first year or first two years or something like that uh, on on the gas line. And, and he's found himself just handed, handed this whole other problem, uh, the economic problem. And I think he's been, frankly, uh, and I would say this to his face, uh, I think he's been overwhelmed by it. And I, and I think he has um, – he's, he's sort of been reacting to it as he's gone, uh, as he's gone along without really thinking through what's going on. So I think, you know, I think that the, the, the taxation issue, getting more revenue – is part of that reaction. Yes, ultimately he wants to get back to the gas line. Yes, 
Ultimately, I think he views the credit rating as, a, as an issue uh, with respect to the gas line. Uh, but I think, I, I think along that road, he's, he's trying to deal in the, in the way he thinks is best with the, with the economic situation he's been handed. And, and I, think he's just, I think he's just making it worse, uh, uh, frankly. But I think, I think there's a sense of being overwhelmed by, that, by, that, by the situation he's been handed. Brad Keithley is our guest. We're going to continue with him in a moment. We're going to see what the man on the street is saying uh, and what that portends for the rest of us here in the state of Alaska and what happens uh, as we come back for this potentially fourth special session. That's all directly ahead on your home for Common Sense Radio. Brad Keithley brings a double dose of Common Sense every Tuesday on the Michael Duke Show on AM 700 KBYR and Oldies 102.1. Michael Duke Show. Brad Keithley continues with us now, taking a look at what's going on around the state of Alaska. The special, 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 special session apparently coming up. That's that's right. It's the fourth special session. Liz Rains from KTVA actually got a chance to go out on the street and ask some people uh, what they thought about what was going on out there in the uh, in the state of Alaska. What they thought that the how good they thought the legislature was doing. And uh, pretty much uh, this is what they had to say. It's not going the way it should be, but this is Alaska. The people we talk to here in Anchorage say this, they haven't been paying close this attention. Is, this, is the, this is the way it is not, you know, this is the way it should be. But my favorite quote was when she got a chance to talk to Kevin Meyer, who, of course, was former Senate president. It's and, not uh, going the way it should be, and, but. And he basically said, uh, he basically said, uh, uh, well, you know, taxes, taxes are bad. The last thing you want to do in a recession is is increase taxes because you're not going to be able to tax your way out of a recession. In fact, it, it's just going to make it worse. Somebody should probably explain to him, Brad, exactly what taxes are because I don't – you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Yeah, I, I, I've tried to explain this to Kevin. I, I, I don't know what it's going to take to get through to him. I mean – Cutting the PFD, uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record on this the, the, today, but but um, but it, it is what it is. Cutting the PFD has a larger adverse impact on the economy than taxes. Taxes are bad. Don't get me wrong. Taxes taxes are a drain on the economy as well. When you're transferring money out of the private sector into the public sector and then respending that money through the public sector, you lose impact on the economy. It gets redirected towards specific industries in specific ways, um, it, it, for example, in the construction industry, in a way that doesn't generate as much income as it does if, those, if that money's held in the private sector. Uh, that's, just, that's just the economic impact. But the biggest impact, on, adverse impact on the overall economy from an income standpoint is cutting the PFD. That is, that is the equivalent of a tax plus. Um, uh, it, in, in terms of what it's doing to the overall economy. I've tried to explain that to Kevin. I've tried to explain that to others, and, and it just isn't getting through their head. They think of it, frankly, as a welfare program and that we're going to take this money back from, from individual citizens, uh, and it's government's money in the first place. We're going to take it back from individual citizens, uh, and we're going to spend it through government, and, and we, we know better how to spend that money than individual citizens do. There's all sorts of things wrong with that analysis. Uh, I've tried to explain it to John Coghill. I've tried to explain it to Pete Kelly. Uh, there's all sorts of things wrong with that analysis. Uh, but nevertheless, that's, that's, that's the track they go off on. And then to see – and then to hear Kevin's quote that says, oh, taxes are bad because you know the last thing you want to do in a recession is increase taxes. The last thing you want to do in a recession, Kevin, is to take money out of the private sector – and take it out of people's hands and take it out of income generating uh, uh, activities. And cutting the PFD, Kevin, is the worst thing you can do uh, uh, from those standpoints. And you've done. I mean, that's that's what the Senate has proposed to do. That's what um, uh, uh, the Senate uh, and House both did by cutting the PFD as part of their operating their capital budget. He's done it. He's done the worst thing that can be done 
to the overall Alaska economy. So I really, I just, I have trouble with Kevin anymore. He just, he just doesn't get it. And unfortunately, he and others are, are in a position of determining what we're doing, but they don't understand uh, what we're, what they're doing. Yeah, it's frustrating. Well, and, and I think it's, I think it's not just, I don't think it's just him. Uh, quite honestly, I don't think it's just him. I think it seems to be, as you point out, every member of, and especially the Senate. The Senate is just hell bent that this, uh, that this, uh, that this permanent fund is again some form of welfare. And you know what? Even if you assume that that's true, which I don't, and you and I agree that that's not true, the hypocrisy of at the same time the Senate is just hell bent on making sure that we spend $700 million plus in this capital budget fully funding the statutory obligation that we've promised to these, uh, that we've promised to these uh, 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 oil companies, and then ignoring the statutory obligation of fully funding the dividend is so rife with hypocrisy, it, it just it blows my mind. Yeah, the, the Senate has been captured. The House has to a, a, a great degree also, but the Senate has become very clear, has been captured by special interests. They've been captured by oil companies who want the cashable oil credits fully funded. They've been captured by some in the construction industry who want to make sure that, that, that at least some construction projects go forward. They've been captured by uh, those who want K-12 K through 12 to be fully funded. They and, and, and the biggest capture of the Senate is by the top 20% income class in Alaska who wants to make sure that they avoid an income tax. So, hey, let's cut the PFD instead because that doesn't hurt us very much. It will fund government. It will generate this new revenue mostly on the backs of other Alaskans instead of on the, instead of on the backs of the, instead of the, of the top 20% paying their proportionate share. So it's, I mean, the, the Senate is, whenever you see – Anymore, whenever you see a senator's mouth moving about economic issues and about uh, 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 these revenue issues, you can you can identify which special interest has captured them. Kevin's right. been captured by the top top twenty percent. Kevin doesn't want oh income tax bad. Well, income tax is bad, but Kevin, what you've done in terms of the PFD cut, in terms of the impact on the overall economy, is worse. He says, he says in that clip, you're not going to be able to tax your way out of a recession. In fact, it's just going to, to make it worse. Well, guess what, Kevin? You've done that. You, by, yeah. by cutting the PFD, you've imposed a tax, and you've made the recession worse. Um, yeah. if, you're, if you're concerned about that, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, well, and that's exactly it. I mean, that, that is exactly the point is that if you guys were really serious about protecting the Alaska economy, you'd be for protecting all of the Alaska economy and not just your your little slice of it. And the largest impact, not just ICER, ITEP said something similar. I mean, there's been several reports that have all said exactly the same thing, that basically this is going to hurt us. This is, I mean, this is not, again, it's not rocket surgery. I mean, we've, we've sussed this out and talked about it. And if you keep treating it like it's some kind of, uh, again, like it's some kind of welfare payment. Uh, it, it's it, it's it, uh, quite honestly, it's really insulting to Alaskans. Well, it's uh, it, it, it's insulting and it, and it's hurtful. I mean, Kevin, yeah. the Kevin's quote says, "The last thing we want to do in a recession is increase taxes." No, no. according to the ICER study, I mean, it, 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 a, 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 par, a part of the problem of this is people think like they're in the lower 48, right? Like with they, we don't have right. a PFD in the lower 48. We don't have a PFD in Hawaii. So they talk to all these economists and they talk to all these analysts and, and all these advisors who think like they're still in the lower 48, right? So the last thing right. you want to do in a recession is increase taxes. Wrong. In Alaska, in a recession, the last thing you want to do is to cut the PFD. That is the most hurtful to the overall economy and individual Alaskans. And, and Alaska families. I mean, ICER said that cutting the PFD has the largest adverse impact on Alaska families by far uh, as well. But the last thing you want to do to the overall economy in Alaska is cut the PFD. And, and if we can't get it through the heads of our, uh, uh, the head of our current, of our current uh, legislators, then we're going to need to replace the legislators. I mean, because we, we can't keep going down this road. We're hurting 
the economy. We hurt the economy last year by cutting the PFD. Now we're going to replicate it by cutting the PFD again, hurt the economy even more. We can't keep going down this road. We're in a recession. We need to start doing things that make the economy, overall economy, better, not worse. Uh, but our current set of legislators seem hell-bent on making it worse. Well, and we've seen the same kind of thing. Like you said, more special interest. I attended the AEDC luncheon, the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation luncheon last week, uh, you know, three three hours, uh, two and a half hours uh, before I finally bailed out uh, on it. But, I mean, we got the gist of it, which essentially was, again, they're predicting an additional year of recession with recovery maybe happening in late 2019. They're projecting, again, thousands of jobs continuing to be lost, highest uh, unemployment in the, sta- in the uh, United States to be continuing. And, of course, their answer was, uh, you know, the legislature is not doing their job. We need to come up with a new plan, including utilization of the permanent fund. That was the verbiage that they used, which is, I mean, that could be code for everything from continuing to tap the permanent fund to changing it to the sovereign wealth fund model so they can eventually get access to the corpus. I mean, they're just this is this is the modus operandi for the powers that be. Yeah, and it's and you know the AEDC is driven by <laughs> driven by corporations and driven by sort of the top twenty percent in terms of in terms of the leadership uh, of it. They're they're all they're all looking out for their cut of the special interest. I mean, they're all they they're all lobbyists in the sense that hey, I need additional money. The PFD, oh, that's just you know that's that's money we can vote on and we can quickly get in, uh, and and we can then direct it through government, get it get it back in the hands of government, get that money back in the hands of government, and then we can direct it where I need it to go. We can direct it to construction, or we can direct direct it to cashable oil and gas tax credits, or we can direct it to, in case of Kevin Meyer, uh, in in past years, you know, building new football stadiums and and astroturf football stadiums at at Anchorage high schools, building a new um, uh, engineering building at UAA that he got to attend the groundbreaking of, uh, or building you know new engineering buildings up at uh, up at the uh, up at Fairbanks. We can direct, we can take that money and we can direct it, you know, through government because government knows better. Well, no, it right. doesn't. Individuals right. know better, and and not only is that philosophically correct when you look at the numbers that ICER's done, it is also economically correct that individuals direct their money in a way that produces more income to the overall Alaska economy than, than government directing uh, that money in, in the ways that it wants to. I, it's just, it, it, we're going down the wrong track. Change the players, change the venue, change the rules. That's got to be the mantra right now, Brad, right? Yep, yep. That's it, okay. Ch- change Our- the rules, change the rules or change the players. One, one of the two. Well, I think we've got to do both, quite honestly. Uh, I think that's the that's the plan. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget. Thank you, my friend. We appreciate it. The Michael Duke Show continues right here on your home for Common Sense Radio. AM 700, KBYR, and Oldies 102.1.